now that we've solved this puzzle, let's see where we go next. Going down the ladder. I'm just gonna follow this this wire. I presume it's gonna lead me directly to the next puzzle, because that's how it worked on the previous island. Ooh, there's a crate. Must smash crate. There's something inside. There's something inside. Kilogram? What? What? I... Uh-oh. That looks like a puzzle. <laughs> yeah, wow, this wire just goes left and right. They really could have saved time by coiling the wire. Ooh, there we go. Here we go. Puzzle number two, but let's see if there's anything else. No, that's a cliffside. I, I, I thought there would be something else there for me to look at. Like another crate. Run, 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 run up the ladder. And this puzzle. Oh my. This looks like it requires me to actually know what happened last puzzle. Oh, so this is a series of papers. Okay, I imagine I'll put all those papers together for a puzzle. Okay. Yeah, so this is clearly continuing uh, the previous puzzle, which is not good. I was kind of bad um, when it came to time over distance. So let's take a look at this. So uh, distance over time. Oh, well, that explains why I was bad at solving it. <laughs> It's distance over time. So you calculate the slope as distance divided by time. So, or you can take it by the smaller section, uh, distance divided by time. Hmm, I don't know. Okay, okay, let's try this again. Okay, so not only do I have to match the time and the distances here, it looks like I have to match the slopes as well. So let's move ahead a little bit in this book. Hopefully I won't have to look up the solution to this puzzle like I did in the, in the previous video with the previous puzzle. One can also make a speed time graph where the vertical axis tracks speed instead of distance. For an object falling at a constant speed, the graph would look something like this. Since distance is multiplied by time, one could get the distance by figuring out the area. Gotcha. Oh, 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 oh whoops. Clicking in the wrong area here. Let's see if I can get this. I think I understand that. So for example, you know, we would take 30 by this amount of time. Hey, that's how I figure time times distance. Uh, 25 times this, that amount of time, that's how I figure out time times distance. Does that make sense? Okay, so obviously, um, distance. Red is going to have the farthest distance. Yellow is going to have the next farthest distance. I think that might be it, but I, I could be totally wrong here. So let's just go with that for now. Let's see. Uh, 150, 100. And it looks something like that. However, uh, it looks like that's not the solution. So let's go back to our book and see if we can figure out what exactly it is we're missing here. Oh, did I not mix 50 and 60? Hmm, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. So, for example, 1 times 10, that's... Great. Two times ten, okay, also good. Three times ten. Hmm. Th 
That's good. I'm, I'm trying to understand this. Distance is speed multiplied by time. You can get the distance by calculating the area. Speed times time is distance. So, I mean, I think I've... Mm, I don't know. I thought I had it figured out, but I haven't. Let's try something a little slightly, uh, slightly different. So this is time in seconds, right? So let's try to uh, organize it according to time. So red having the highest time would be a five. And then yellow having the next highest five. Something like that, perhaps? Let's see if these numbers correlate with anything, or if I'm just completely wrong. Okay, those numbers don't appear to correlate with anything. Okay. Gosh, I wish there was a hint system or something in this game which would let me know what I am doing. <laughs> See, the, the, the book explains here's how we measure distance, speed times time, but without any measurement of time over here on the bottom of the screen, then that's not incredibly useful, because I can't figure out 30 times what equals, uh, um, could extrapolate, I guess. Like, 4 times 25 is 100. 4 times 15 is 60. Um, 5 times 30 is 150. I'm going to have to do it like this. I can guess that. Okay, so 5 times 30 is 150. 4 times 25 is 100. 4 times 20 is 80. 4 times 15 is 60, and then 5 times 10 is 50. Maybe? So let's try to get this uh, uh, matched up here then. Okay, so I'm matching distance, and distance would be the uh, y-axis here. So I need 150 here at the top. And then 100 underneath it. And then 80, 60, 50. Okay, that's it. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure that is the way you're supposed to solve that puzzle, but I solved it myself without looking at the answer. So I'm accepting that as a super cool puzzle solution. Okay, let's keep following these wires. Oh, wow. Okay. Multiple wires now, everyone. Another crate. Gonna smash it. Another paper. Sure hope I'm not missing a paper. That would be a tragedy. I'd have to go back and see if there are more crates. And that's not a pathway. Good. Oh, I've already forgotten which wire I'm following. Is it this one? It's this one. Okay, so this is the wire I'm supposed to follow. I can tell because this is powered up. Giving us... more journal pages? Probably, uh, I don't know how many. Another dozen journal pages, maybe. thought I saw a house up there, but I could be wrong. Okay, great. Okay, figured out where this is leading me. It's leading me up here, where obviously I will have another puzzle. So, I'm going to read my journal, and in the next video, I'll see if I can solve this puzzle. It looks like it's about air, and 
these are cool things at the bottom. Cool.